Hi guys, welcome back. So let's use the notion of Nash equilibrium, the best responding, and, and find the Nash equilibrium of these three simple games. Well, they are simple uh, partly because we can represent these games as a matrix form. And so finding Nash equilibrium is uh, probably the easiest. Uh, later, uh, we are going to look at games where the players have infinitely many strategies. In this case, finding Nash equilibrium is going to be a little bit more involved. All right, but let's go step by step. So let's first understand how we find the Nash equilibrium in these simple games. So the first game I'm going to look at the battle of the sexes game. So there are two players and each player has two actions. So how do we find the Nash equilibrium? Remember, Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile where each player best responds, uh, his or her opponent. You can make the analysis in two different ways. One, you can just select a strategy profile. For example, here there are, well, by the way, for this specific example, I'm going to look at only pure strategies. So you can select strategy profiles. In this game, there are four of them, BB, BO, OB, and then OO, right? And then check if each player is best responding his opponent or not, okay? Alternatively, you can just do it on the uh, metrics. Uh, which is, to be honest, much easier and, and probably a, a, a time saver. So, but let me do both, at least for this example. So here, given that I have four strategy profiles, which one of those are Nash equilibrium? Meaning, which one of those are regret-free? Once they learn that BB is the outcome, is any of the players will regret out of this choice? Well, player one is going to say, look, you played B, and I played B, all right? And so I got two. If I had picked O instead, I would, I would have got zero. So you know what? Given that you played B, uh, thank God I played B because uh, otherwise I would get zero. So you know what? As player one, I'm not gonna regret my choice. Symmetrically, player two, once he learns that his, uh, her opponent selected B, she is going to say, well, by selecting B, I actually got payoff one. Otherwise, if I, if, if I, uh, you know, uh, played, uh, if I had played O, I would get, uh, I would have get zero. So therefore, uh, thanks God, I did not play O. And so I don't regret my choice. So everybody is basically best responding his opponent. All right. So therefore, this is an Ash equilibrium. Well, clearly, once you look at this game, clearly player two would like to get this two rather than one, right? But once again, the Nash equilibrium is asking whether you regret the finalized outcome or not, or whether you best responded your, uh, your opponent's uh, strategy or not. Don't forget that. Okay. So, once again, knowing the limitations of Nash equilibrium is very important. Well, what about BO, however? Well, BO is not uh, Nash equilibrium. Why is that? Well, once I learn uh, that we played BO as player one, remember, we played, I played B, you played O. Uh, so I got zero. Is this the best I could do? Well, actually, if I had selected O instead, I would get one. So I'm not best responding. You see what I mean? So therefore, my choice of B, given that you selected O, is actually caused me some regret. I should have played O because that maximizes my payoff. So therefore, player one is not best responding player two, and hence, this is not Nash equilibrium. What about player two? Does he best respond? You don't really have to look at it. As long as one player is not best responding, that means this strategy profile is not Nash equilibrium. Because remember the definition of Nash equilibrium? It says every player best responses, his or her opponent. With symmetric arguments, OB is also not Nash, not Nash equilibrium. And OO, uh, which basically ends up one and two outcome, is a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so this is how we basically uh, do it. Alternatively, what we can do, uh, just on the uh, metrics, you can find the best response of each player. So let's suppose player two plays B, 
all right? So if she plays B, what is the best response, the best action for player one? It's clearly B because B is bringing two payoff, O is bringing zero payoff. So I'm gonna underline uh, two because I just wanted to say B is a best response to B, all right? This is why I underlined two. Now, what if instead she plays O, opera? Well, in that case, what I know is that opera is the best response to opera because if, if he plays B, he's going to get zero, not one. So therefore, I'm going to underline one just to indicate that opera is the best response to opera. Okay, you got the idea. Now, what I'm going to get, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do exactly the same thing for player one. So let's suppose player one played B. What is the best response for player uh, two? Well, boxing is gonna bring her one payoff, opera is gonna bring her zero payoff. So obviously boxing is the best response because one is higher than zero. So I underline one, again, just to indicate that boxing is a best response to boxing. Symmetrically, what if the first player is selected O, oh, the opera? Well, in that case, the boxing is gonna bring zero payoff, the opera is gonna bring two payoffs. So clearly opera is the best response. So I underline two, just to indicate that opera is the best response to opera. So whenever I have underlined two of those numbers, that means player one best responded player two and player two best responded player one. So that's the definition of Nash equilibrium. So this outcome and this outcome, these are Nash equilibrium outcomes. And hence BB and the OO are the Nash equilibrium strategy profiles. And these are the corresponding outcomes, okay? So let's jump to, well, the second game. Uh, it's slightly more complicated because uh, player one has four action strategies, player two has three strategies, but I'm gonna use the second approach. So I'm going to underline the numbers just to indicate uh, what the best response of each player is. So here, if the second guy by the way, it really doesn't matter whether you start from the second guy or from the first guy. The analysis will not be different. The outcome of the analysis will not be different. So if the second guy selects X, what is the best response for player one? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C or D? Well, obviously B because 9 is higher than all the other numbers. Okay, so I underline 9 just to indicate B is the best response to X. However, if the second guy selects or plays Y, what is the best response for first player? Is it D, C, B, or A? Clearly D, because eight is higher than the other numbers. So I underline eight just to indicate D is the best response to Y. And then finally, if player two plays Z, the best response is D, or C, or B, or A. Well, six is higher than everything else, so I underline this six, uh, indicate that C is the best response to Z, but what about this six, right? I mean, this six is also higher than everything else, except this one, but they're equal, so does that mean that B is also best response? Exactly. So B is also best response to Z, so I underline both those sixes, because both B and C are best response to Z. All right. So I'm done with finding best response of the first player. Now I'm gonna find the best response of the second player. So what if player one plays A? What is the best response for player two? Is it X? Is it Y? Is it Z? Well, clearly Y, so I'm underline seven. However, if the first guy selects B, well, the best response, is it X? Is it Y? Is it Z? Clearly X, so therefore I underline three. By the way, I found one Nash equilibrium outcome. BX, the Nash equilibrium strategy profile, is a Nash equilibrium. There might be others. Let's see. Remember, in this game, for example, there are two Nash equilibrium. All right, so here, what if player one plays C? Is it uh, the best response? Is it X? Is it Y? Is it Z? Clearly Z. So you know what? I got another Nash equilibrium, which is uh, CZ, is also a Nash equilibrium with a different outcome, 6-6. Six, six. And then finally, if player one plays D, 
what is the best response? Is it X? Is it Y? Is it Z? Well, it's Y, clearly. So you know what? I found a third Nash equilibrium, which is dy, is also a Nash equilibrium. All right, so that's it. These are the only three uh, Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. Later, we're going to talk about mixed strategies, but forget about them for a moment. So these are the only Nash equilibrium in pure strategies of this game, and this is exactly how we find uh, the Nash equilibrium. By the way, just to make a remark, uh, most of the times, the first-time learners, the students, uh, when they make this best response analysis on the metrics, the confusion they have is like, you know, the first numbers always belong to the first player, the second numbers always belong to the second player. Sometimes students mix them up, and so, unfortunately, they end up the wrong Nash equilibrium. So this is a serious mistake. The second problem, sometimes students, for example, says, uh, what if player A1 plays A? But instead of comparing the second numbers, the student compares the first number. All right, but don't forget, the first numbers do not belong to the second player. And in fact, you should be comparing the second player's payoffs. So therefore, again, this is a serious mistake. So these are sort of two common mistakes when finding Nash equilibrium. Be careful. All right, and then the third and the final example that I have, let me uh, clean up some space because uh, we already talked about those. Well, this time I don't have two players, but I have three players. I nevertheless can represent it in, in a metrics form. So player one is the row player selecting A or B. Um, this is also A or B, sorry. And player two is the column player selecting X or Y. And then player three is the metrics player. He's, she's selecting W or T, all right? Okay, so how do we find the Nash equilibrium? All right, so now it's even more important to understand what payoff refers to what player. The first payoff refers to first player, the row player. The second payoff refers to column player. And then the third payoff corresponds to the matrix player. So therefore, when I compare this one, so how should I, should I compare this one with three? Um, never, because player one's choice is never between X and Y. All right, so therefore his choice is between A and B. So therefore, if I compare one, I'm, I'm gonna compare this one with this one, all right? However, for player two, if I compare this one, I need to compare it with this zero because his choice is between X and Y, not between A and B. So I can't compare one with two or one with this two, all right? Uh, because he's not selecting between this matrix versus this matrix. And for Sorry, finally, when I compare this one for the third player, I can't say this, I can't compare this one with zero because once again, player three is not choosing between X and Y. I can't compare this one with this zero because again, player three is not choosing between A and B. Well then, what number should I be comparing this one with? Well, it is this two that you should be comparing. It's not this zero or one or one, but it has to be this two where player one is still playing A, player two is still playing X, only player three is selecting whether W and get one or T and get two, all right? So that's very, very critical, guys. All right, so now I'm gonna do, let's suppose the, the best responding. Player two is playing X. What is the best response for player one? Is it one or, I'm sorry, is it A or is it B? Well, both of them are giving the payoff one, so that means both of them are in fact best response. Very good. What if player one, uh, I'm sorry, player two uh, plays Y? It is the best response A or B? Well, clearly three is higher than zero, so A is the best response. So I underline A, uh, three, just to underline that A is the best response to Y. All right, well, what if player three has played T instead of W? So we are in this matrix. And player two selected X again. What is going to be the best response for player one? Is it A or B? So this decision is different than this decision, obviously, because the payoffs are different. Well, clearly it's the, the best response is B because one is higher than zero. So I'm going to underline this one. And then finally for player two, if uh, he plays Y, what is the best response for player one? Is it A or is it B? Well, clearly A because three is higher than two. So I underline three. 
All right, I'm done with player two. Now I'm gonna best response for player one. So let's suppose player one has selected A, all right? Um, and player three selected W, okay? Well, in that case, what is the best response for player two? Is it X or is it Y? Well, clearly X, so therefore I underline this one. Well, good. What if player three selected W, but player one selected B instead of A? What would be the best response for player two? Is it X or is it Y? Well, clearly X because two is higher, so I underline this number. Finally, not finally, but once player three instead plays T and player one plays A, what is the best response for player two? Is it X or is it Y? Well, it's X, so therefore I underline two. And once player one plays B and player three plays T, what is the best response for player two? Is it X or Y? Well, clearly X because it brings higher payoff. So I underline two just to indicate that X is the best response to B and T. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, well, let's suppose player one and two selected AX, all right? So, okay, so AX here, AX here. What is the best response for player three? Is it one, I'm sorry, is it uh, W or is it T? Well, it's clearly T because two is giving higher payoff. So for that reason, I underline this number. Very good. Well, now I'm done with AX. I'm going to do this BX, all right? So BX here, BX here. What is the best response for the third player? Is it, uh, is it W or is it T? Well, both of them are going to bring him zero payoff. So that means both of those actions are strategies, I'm sorry, are actually best response. So I'm going to underline both of those just to indicate both W and T are best response. Uh, by the way, I found my first and second, well, I mean, at least two Nash equilibria here. Let's discuss this later. Maybe we have more. I don't think so, but... So what if player one plays A and the second plays Y, AY? So the best response for player three, is it W or is it Y? Well, it's Y. And finally, BY. So the best response, is it, the, is it W or is it T? Well, they both are going to bring the third player payoff of one. So both of them are best response. So here, one Nash equilibrium is payoff is this guy and the other Nash equilibrium payoff is this guy. So there are two Nash equilibrium strategy profile. One of them is BXW and the other one is BXT. The order is important, be careful. The first player strategy, the second player strategy and the third player strategy. With the corresponding payoffs, one, two, zero and one, two, zero. Exactly the same payoffs, very well. Is there any other Nash equilibrium? No, for example, this is not a Nash equilibrium. Why not? Well, look, here, uh, if this is the outcome, the, the, the second and the third player will say, okay, I actually did my best, but the first guy, he's gonna say, shoot, I should have played something else. Why is that so? Well, because this strategy profile is what? A, X, T, right? So given that the second player and the third player is playing X and T, what is the best response for player one? Is it A and get zero or is it B and get one? Clearly it's B. So zero, I mean, is, is going to cause regret. He should, I mean, the player one is gonna say, I should have played B rather than uh, A. So this is not regret-free outcome in that sense. And therefore this is not Nash equilibrium. So it's important that in a Nash equilibrium strategy profile, every player is best responding, meaning, if, if I'm selecting, if I'm sort of searching for Nash equilibrium, all the numbers uh, should be underlined, all right? If one of them is not underlined, that means that player wasn't best responding. And hence, that strategy profile cannot be Nash equilibrium, all right? Okay, very good. So this is the, I mean, the, these three examples are basically uh, I, I mean, normally gives the idea of what Nash equilibrium is. And uh, next, we are going to talk about some more complicated examples. More complicated because we cannot draw the metrics form. And so, 
visualizing what's best response or what's not is slightly harder, uh, but they're very important part of understanding the concept of Nash equilibrium. So it's coming up next.